Well, it feels an absolute lifetime since I was back out with Joe doing the 365 series. But we're, uh, we're at a very special lake. We're at Horseshoe Lake, the Carp Society's Horseshoe Lake, and a uh, special place to me. You know, I grew up here. Uh, I spent all my youth, sort of 16 to sort of 2021, 20, on these banks, running up and down, trying to catch, uh, catch its jewels. And um, it feels really nice to get back down here. Not much has changed. You know, the lake is what it is. Um, the weed's still here, which it wouldn't be horseshoe without it. You know, it needs its weed beds and you've really got to work for your spots and uh, work for your fish as well. And that's exactly what I've done this morning. You know, I've had a letter round and we're gonna cut the cast. Like I said, I knew it was weedy, but um, there's always spots out here. There's too many fish to not clean areas off. So like I said, I've had, I've had a good dozen, maybe even 20 casts trying to locate an area where I can get a better bait down. And um, it's not really silk weedy as such, it's more Canadian pond weed. So instead of sort of casting out there, and dragging a lead back trying to find a spot. You know, you're not gonna find the spots doing that. You'll probably notice I was constantly jolting my lead out of the weed, and then trying to get filth past the weed onto the hard areas. And it took a dozen casts, but I've located an area. It's not miles out, um, just over 20 wraps, which is 80 odd yards. So yeah, now it's time to uh, get a little bit of food out there for them. I'll probably fish through in a spot because I've had, I've had a cast not just on the spot, but left and right of it. Uh, right if it's clearer than left, but I still want to bait on the left and I'll fish probably a little pop-up on that one maybe and two little wafters um, middle and right, but we'll see how things uh, pan out Yeah, looking forward to this one. So I'll catch you in a bit with some rods in the water And we'll go over some baiting tactics and everything that I'm going to do in this session We've got quite a uh, horrible crosswind here, and when you're trying to mend your line, this is when it's so easy to move that lead. More importantly, move the hook, potentially blunt it, and before you know it, we're fishing, um, we'll be fishing two rods instead of three effectively. So I'm just taking my time to sink this line so I get a perfect, direct line lay to my lead. But you've got to be gentle, you know. Gently, gently wins the race, and then we'll be fishing super effectively. Both them rods have gone down absolutely plumb, and there's loads of weed out there, and I'm only fish, fishing like a quite a thin strip of gravel. It's probably only about half a rod length, I reckon. So it's really important that I take my time and stay on that little bit of thin gravel. She's coming now. Come on, line. Well, we are in. What an absolute buzz, man. When that went off. <sighs> Bloody love this place. But um, left hand rod, the white pop-up in a little milky toffee. That's not on the clear area, that one. That's on the silt. Now, whether the fish are just coming in from the left to the right, we'll find out in a few bites time, I reckon. But for now, whether it would be a bright hook bait, softer stuff you know i'm observing and learning all the time on here because i've not fished it for many many years but all that matters at the minute is i've got one and i've got to battle it for this weed so i'm going to take my time and hopefully we get to see what's on the end cool typical horseshoe man you work them and it's it's not over until they're in the net i love this place Brings back so many happy memories. I remember these battles as well. <laughs> Loads of weed. I can't see the fish. I don't want to net that build of weed just to get caught up in it all. So I'll uh, come here, girl. Yeah, I think it's well. Yes much further than the weed bed. So, oh no, it doesn't help if you put your line, the weed back over the line. That's better. That helped. See the fish now. Oh yeah. 
nice fish that is. What you expect from horseshoe, plenty of scales. Wish that little bit of weed there would go, but. Bosh. That's it, come on girl. Get that little bit of weed over your head. So much power, these fish. Nothing changes. I've had some battles down here in weed beds and big carp. And this one is... Uh... It's like last strands of weed. Get off. Let's come off, here comes the fish, big white milky toffee hanging out of its bottom jaw. That is a lovely linear as well. Come on girl, all the way, all the way. <laughs> oh, this one knows the game. Oh my God, I'm getting towed. Should be all right now, the weed's gone. I'm saying that, look, load more. Oh, she was nearly ours in and all. Come on, sweetheart. Ah, last time. Here you go. Wash your cup this time. Get that bit of weed over your head, go. Yes. Oh. What a fight. But we have got the most awesome of prizes. A proper old horseshoe linear. Get in. 15 minutes from hooking it. Wow, that was a fight and a half. And there we go. Welcome back to Horseshoe, eh? Quite here, we put a bit of bait out. I'll give them sort of three quarters of a bucket of uh, crumb, whole boilies and a little bit of corn. Didn't take long, it didn't take long. And this one, um, it munched on a white pop-up just off the spot. You know, I've got a fairly decent sized gravelly area out there and I've got two rods on that. But I thought I'd put one in the softer stuff. And he's come round first and nabbed him. Quality, right. Let's get that rod back on the money. See if we can get another one. Right, now that fish is safely back, I'm gonna uh, get this rod back out there. Before I do, I'm gonna run you through exactly how I'm fishing on the left-hand side of the spot, because the middle rod and the right-hand rod, they're on the same rigs as I was fishing on B2. My little slip D combis, um, I've caught loads on them. You know, if it's hard bottom, that's what I'm fishing on. If you wanna uh, look back on how I do that rig, look on the description and there'll be a link back to the old video on B2, where there's like a how-to on there. But for this one, Little spinner rigs, you know, like I said, the, the left hand side of my spot, it's firm, I'm getting a nice drop, but it's not as hard or on gravel like the other two. So I've opted to fish a pop up, little milky toffee, and that's what that bite there came to. So I'll, uh, yeah, I'll run you through how I like to fish my spinner rig. So, big point hook again. When I'm fishing barbless hooks, I much prefer a big point rather than a straight point. That's lovely and sharp. Um, bit of supernatural and I'm gonna do my old favorite whipping knot. You know, this goes on so many of my rigs. Pinch the braid to the hook, um, come round, as you come round, you're creating that sort of loop under your finger and thumb, uh, trapping the, the line to the shank of the hook. There's your little loop to go back through. Pull it tight, and that way, that knot will come off exactly where I want it just as it goes round the bend there. Perfect. Snip the braid there. Back through the back of the eye. And then just a one turn, not this knot. And then back through. So that's what we're left with there. Okay. Get a little bit of medium shrink tube in. About an inch will do the job. Thread that onto the shank of the hook so it goes all the way onto the shank as well 
lovely jubbly. And then we'll pop that onto our spinner swivel as well. Let's have a look. Beautiful. The shrink tubing back over the spinner, all the way up until it meets the barrel of the hook. Like so, we've got a tag end there, which we're gonna cut off. And then I'll finish it off with a little burn. My tag end there now, I'm just gonna burn him nice and flat to the swivel. And then shrink the tube in. Just a quick one, all done. A little bit of saliva to cool it down to keep my, look at that, absolutely perfect. Tie off a little loop to get my bait on. Bait's what, 14, 12 mil? So about 13, 14 mil here. Lovely. Cut that off. Let's get a bait on there, make sure my IQ's lovely and straight. Living the dream, beautiful. Pick a lucky one, that one looks good. The amount of times I've slipped up carp on, uh, on little white pop-ups off the spot, you know. There was a, a fair bit, not loads, if I put out, I probably put out 30 spoms, five of them went to the left, so it's not on the majority of the bait, but um, there's still bait out there. So maybe they just haven't reached the main spot yet, we'll see. But I'm definitely expecting them rods on the bait to go. Do like a nice straight boom. Engage that swivel. Pull my tail rubber out a little bit so it flays flat. And there she is. Simple fishing. Let's get it out of there. Right then, since that um, midday out of the blue bite, all has gone a bit quiet, as I'd sort of expect, you know. Mid-July, um, winter bay, 10, 12 foot of water. Yeah, you know, it's, it's gonna be early evenings, night, some mornings in here. So, uh, to get off on the right foot though is an absolute bonus. But, um, yeah, going into tonight, I need to get some more bait out there. I'll reposition them rods as well. I'm gonna stick to how I'm fishing. Uh, I think it's right, I think it's just bite time's not come around yet, but I want to make sure I've got plenty of food out there for when that happens. So I'm going to run you through the mix and um, yeah, it's, it's pretty easy really. I've got, I've got a crumbed up bait, and this is a test bait at the minute, it's called the Fibre. Um, very creamy in colour, very sort of almost selling colour. But I love this when it's crumbed up, it goes nice and fluffy. And it's a good, sort of good base to my mix, so I've, let's knock a bit of a mix up. I've got a good couple of handfuls of uh, the fibre in there. And then 10 mil boardies. I've always loved fishing over sort of small, smaller food items like small boardies, crumb, and a little bit of corn. Um, especially on these more prolific -y type lakes, it keeps the fish sort of milling around for longer and you can get a few more bites out of your swim. But um, prepping your bait, you know, it, it's, it's super important. I've got all sorts of hook baits in here to try and little wafters, little pop ups, little pink toppers, everything I need get a bite so I'm gonna first off I've got a bit of a bit of crumb in that mix but I'm gonna quickly add some 10 mils to this bucket here I'm gonna get, get a kilo in there and I'm gonna add some smart liquid in there Ooh, yes I love this stuff get that all over that bait lovely and coated into it I do time to get messy Oh, the good fatty acids from that smart liquid. I'm leaving that bucket. 
loads of attraction there, piling off the bait. And then we'll add that to our crumb. I reckon if we got another couple of handfuls of crumb to a good half a kilo of boilie. And then a little bit of corn. Not loads, just a little fleck of colour. That'll do. Give that a mix and blend. And that is a banquet for any carp that want to come onto my spot tonight. You know, there's loads of food items there. I tracked them down into that sort of 10 or 12 foot of water, get them on the spot. When I was fishing over here as a youngster, I wasn't working, didn't have much money. So um, I didn't really have any access to, to boilies, you know. It's all sort of particle fishing, hemp and pellet and a little bit of corn at the time. I caught a lot of fish. You know, I was catching a lot of the shellfish, um, but not that many big ones. And I've actually got it written down somewhere. I think it was in a carp talk years ago. I went through, I think it was 264 carp before I got my first 30. And there was a lot of 30s back in there in then, in then days as well. So I reckon if I'd have had boilies back then, I'd have definitely have picked out a few more of the bigger ones. So, um, no, it's nice to come back over here with a good sort of boilie mix in there and see if we can get amongst some better fish. Like first fish already, 26 pound. It's a good fish, you know? So um, yeah, I'm looking forward to tonight. See if they get on this boilie, I'm sure they will. All right, it's no good in the bucket. Tense bombs should fire the swim up a little bit. Well, we are fish on from a very, very slow night. Um, but yeah, it's quite funny. I was sitting there in the bivvy, watching the fish over in the big double sort of area. And all the coots were there all morning long and the fish were shining in front of them and uh, in amongst them. Just looked up and the coots have shifted, you can see, right on top of me. And uh, as soon as I thought, oh, that's interesting, the right hand rod just absolutely melted off. And in doing so, it's found itself a nice thick weed bed. But I think we'll win eventually. It's still there, it's just, just inch by inch until uh, she gets clear. That line angle has made all the difference. I love fishing in weed and the battles you, that take place, but. <laughs> yeah. I think I've actually got the weed bed moving rather than the actual fish, which, testament to good strong line. Like I said, I think I've got the weed bed moving rather than the fish, so it's just a case of steady, steady. You know, that weed bed's in a way, a serious amount of weight and you're never gonna you're never going to move it quickly, so don't panic. Slowly walk back. I'm sure once we get a bit closer, the fish will either kick out of the weed bed, or I'll be netting a ball of weed, or rummaging through it to find a carp. The weed bed's just hit the surface. Just want to see that weed just dip or sink as the fish moves. Telltale sign of big fat carp sitting amongst it. What are we netting? There's a carp there, I can see him. Yep, I can see him. Right, we're in a bit of a... This is where it gets messy now because the fish is not in the net but the line's going through it. So, action stations as they say. Clutch on. I have to let it go for now. It'll cut me off otherwise. 
drag it back to this wee bed and I'll deal with it. Really, really, really need to get that bit of weight off my line. There's no way I'm going to net that with that in the way, so I'm going to go for it. This is probably worst case scenario. <laughs> As long as you take your time, keep your cool, have a game plan in mind, and you've got strong tackle, you generally will win. Right, really need to get this weed off my line. Try and keep all tangles to a minimum. All right, fish, just calm down. Find a little weed bed somewhere while I set you free. Get off. She's still there. All right, I'm happy there's enough weed there. Move now. Let's get on my line off of this, and we're back in. We've only a little bit of weed to play with now, which I do need to move, to be fair. Oh, mate. It's a scaly beauty, that is, boy. That is an absolute worldie. He's a big fish as well. Come on, girl. <sighs> so rewarding when you start winning these battles. <laughs> that is an epic carp as well. <sighs> Mate. Oh, one is just lumped right on the spot. Oh, mate, it's all going off. This is epic. Absolutely plumb on the spot. I've seen nothing out there all morning, but they've finally found the bait. Shame that coot stitched me up on that other rod, but to be fair, all I'm worried about is getting this one in, because this is a, uh, a really, really nice fish. Oh, mate, yeah. Right, get that bit of weed in your head, girl. The weed's actually gonna help us out here, I think. Come on, sweetheart. You've had enough, I know you have. Two foot, oh mate, weldy. Proper old, proper old carp. They fight so hard in all shoe. 70 acres to swim around in there, you know, they're fit as fiddles. Get that weed on your head. Line angle right again. Here she comes. Oh, mate, that's beautiful. That is absolutely what you come to horseshoe for. Right, I'm going to have you this time, sweet. Oh, yes, get in that net. Oh, my God, get in. What a fight. Mate, that is so rewarding. Yeah, one of the old horseshoe warriors. I'm buzzing with that. Absolutely buzzing with that. I won the battle. <laughs> Look what rocked up at bite time. That is what you come to Horseshoe for, a proper old original. He's been around years, you know, I fished it, fished it 15, 18 years ago and she was swimming around then and still looking as beautiful now. Bit of frustrating morning watching them quite far away but they soon come down and as soon as they did, the first show I saw, I had a bite straight away so the bait was definitely there to be eaten and they got straight on it. What a carp. Look at the fins, they're just... Yeah. That's what you come for. Right, let's get her back. 
She did a right old battle. I'm buzzing with that. Hopefully she's swimming around in another 20 or 30 years time. Epic. That's what I come for. Well, what an absolute buzz that was, you know. I've been watching these fish all morning, some 150 yards away from me in the big double. The coots have been out there, the fish have been showing amongst them. And I've been sitting there waitingly patient, you know, believing in the baited spot if they came. And slowly, slowly the coots start drifting down. And I don't know who follows who, whether the fish follow the coots or it's vice versa, but um, yeah, the coots eventually ended up on my spot. And within seconds, the right hand rod was away, you know. So that baited spot, it's there, it's waiting and I've had a bite on the right hand rod, so they've come to that one straight away. But what a battle, you know, I've had to battle it through some monstrous weed beds, there's loads of it in the water, you've probably seen me playing it in the margins as well. It's, it's no good just stabbing at the fish there, you're just going to end up losing them, so I've had to sort of get the weed off the line and eventually got a good line to the fish, and over the net she went, and uh, yeah, a proper original from horse, you know, that fish has been here when I was back in here in sort of 2000, and it was probably another 15, 20 years previous to that. So it's awesome to see it swimming around still and loving life. They don't make them like that anymore. That old leany strain with the old whittled fins. Yes, yeah, you know, it's not a monster, 22, 23 pound, but that's a proper carp. You know, that's how they should look. Really, really nice fish. So yeah, um, the rods are back on the money. I've not topped up any bait. It was getting sort of half nine, 10 o'clock now. It's getting pretty warm as well. I'm not expecting too much, so I don't want to start putting more bait out there and making it more hard work for myself. But I'm, I still believe there's bait out there. You know, they come from the right. I got a bite on my right hand rod very quick when they come onto the spot. So I still think there's a bit out there. There's still a chance, but uh, if it doesn't happen, another fantastic session. Um, great to be back at Horseshoe. If I do get one, you'll see it. If not, I will catch you soon. Hopefully somewhere different, and uh, but getting the same results. Hope to see you soon.